teacher mode deployed. <laughs> Hi all, I'm Jeanette Keynes from Jewelry Arts Inc. I'm coming to you from our studio in Midtown Manhattan and I'm here for Jewelry Week. I'm gonna be with you the whole week, every day. And I'm here to talk to you about something extremely near and dear to my heart, which is why handmade matters. So I'm gonna take you on a little bit of a guided tour uh, certainly not that I speak for the entire jewelry industry, but you'll get to see it through my eyes a little bit. Um, I'll show you why handmade matters so much to me, and maybe it'll matter to you too. So I'm sure everyone out there knows all about jewelry arts, but just in case there's somebody that doesn't, I'll tell you a little bit about my studio and how it came about. Uh, basically, it started back in the 50s with a man named Robert Kulik. He was a very well-known painter and actually quite famous frame maker. And he became interested in ancient jewelry making techniques, things like granulation and Byzantine enameling and stuff like that. Uh, if you go to the Met and you look at the Greek and Etruscan jewelry, like that kind of stuff. So I'm just gonna do a tiny historical sidebar for those of you who don't know about ancient jewelry making techniques. Uh, this particular piece is a piece that I photographed at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Uh, it has granulation, which you see all those beautiful little tiny granules, those little tiny balls that are attached all the way around. I mean, this is super high detail, high skill level work. Um, the Etruscans went from about 700 BC to 300 BC uh, in sort of the area that's now Italy. Uh, they're just one of many ancient cultures that, as you can see from looking at this unbelievable piece, achieved an incredibly high level of expertise in handmade jewelry making. So you might think, oh, ancient jewelry from that long ago, it's probably pretty like primitive. Like, uh, no, uh, this is at a level of expertise that you really don't see today, except for maybe sometimes in my studio. And although Bob and Jean figured out the secrets of granulation uh, a few decades ago, there's still a whole lot else that we can learn from studying the, these pieces. This particular piece, um, I was working on a research project at the Met uh, a year or two before the apocalypse. Uh, but of course, because the apocalypse, all that's on hold now, but we'll get back to it. Um, you know, when you examine these ancient pieces, we're able to then run tests and pretty much figure out how they did things, which is a slow but very interesting process. So just remember when you think of ancient, do not necessarily think of simple or primitive in any way. There was a lot of incredibly sophisticated work going on. I'm also gonna show you later just the tiniest little peek of how this stuff actually happens in the studio. And he started sort of like reaching out to other to other jewelers and you know making contacts. And he was very disappointed because what he found was that there was very few people that he could find that knew how to do those techniques. I mean, like, you know, on one hand, very few. And unfortunately, those people would not share their information. And they might tell you a little bit of it, but they wouldn't tell you like what you really needed to know. Now Secrets in art, you know, you can totally understand why an artist might want to sort of feel like they need to protect their own domain and this is my thing and, and whatever. So it's not so much that I feel like, like how dare they, those bastards. But on the other hand, when information isn't shared, that's how it's lost. And, and overall, as like humanity, that makes us all poorer. So Bob was all pissed. He was just like, this is an outrage. I'm gonna figure out how to do these things and I'm gonna teach anybody. If anyone who wants to know, I'm not going to keep a, a single secret. And basically that's what he did. Uh, his wife at the time was Jean Stark, which those of you who maybe know a little bit about classical goldsmithing, which is unbelievable goldsmith. And they worked together and they brought other people together and basically, you know, studied, experimented, fucked up, oh, started again, and, and really learned how to do these techniques. It actually took Bob and Jean 24 years to learn the secrets of granulation. Uh, granulation is, uh, I'll show you guys a little bit of that later just to show you what it is, but basically it's a very advanced handmade technique. So for a quick little side trip to the actual bench, for those of you who like, what's granulation? What's any of these techniques? Why should I care? I'm gonna show you. So for example, this is a finished piece with granulation on it, like so, that I made, I don't remember how long ago at this point. 
And, you know, here's one of my, this is my compass ring, uh, which is, you know, a simple little thing that I made. But the, the point that I want to make when you think about handmade jewelry is that someone thought to place every single element. Because granulation is basically that technique with those little balls, right? Now people will be like, oh, how does that get on there? You see this? Jewelry making is a combination of the sublime and the ridiculous, because what you have in there is beautiful, delicious little gold granules, which is really just a little bit of gold metal. You take it, you melt it, it forms a beautiful little ball. And yes, these are tea strainers because they hold the granules beautifully. So if you think about a piece like this that you look at, someone had to make every one of those little elements. They had to think, where are they gonna go? How am I gonna place them on there? Like, am I gonna place them beautifully or are they gonna look a little, you know, random can be beautiful too, but we always joke that like, there's really no such thing as random, you know? It's like, you just make it look random, mm -hmm. but it's not really random. Mm. And how they're applied, like right here, uh, my very talented apprentice Alexis has just like started a project. So she's got a beautiful little gold sheet right there. She's fused a little gold wire down. This is how it all starts. You know, she made her sheet, she made her wire, put them in place and fuse them. And I'm not gonna go into like too much gory detail, but fusing is basically where you heat something, the Goldilocks amount just enough to attach it beautifully, but not too much to have it melt into a puddle. And uh, it's not easy. And you melt lots of things into puddles trying to get it that way. And then she's going to apply, I'm gonna just put a few of them on here so that we can play with it. These are just in water. You see that? We take a little paintbrush and I'm just gonna like put some granules on there, like so. Make sure we don't, we're doing it in a little dish because it takes a, um, metric fuck ton of work to make granules. Uh, so we want to make sure we don't lose any. So we do, that's why we do it in a little bowl. The, the metric fuck ton is a, it's a technical thing. You don't have to worry about that. That's just for jewelers, you know, that we need to know that. But then we would take our brush with a little water and start to arrange them. And you can put them in little patterns, whatever it is you want to do. I'm just going to do something simple just to start, just to show you So this is one of the reasons I'm just taking this little tiny detour to the bench to show you what goes into handmade jewelry. Because I think a lot of times people just sort of look at something and they're like, oh, I like that and, or whatever, which is great, don't get me wrong, your gut emotional reaction to something is important. But there's so much thought and work and years of study and practice and bitter disappointment. <laughs> Everyone else is giggling in here because they're like, oh, testify. Uh, that goes into making a beautiful piece of handmade jewelry. So I'm just showing you a tiny little taste of what goes into it. So hopefully when you look at a piece, you can look at it with a little bit of a, a fresh appreciation um, the way that we do, because of course we look at every little morsel um, like it's the most important thing in the whole world. But along the way, even when this was all happening in Bob's living room, they were sharing this information with anybody who wanted to know. And eventually they opened a studio. Like first it was, you know, Kulik Stark Academy of Jewelry Arts, something, you know what I mean? And it, it changed, you know, Jewelry Arts Institute. Now we've shortened it to Jewelry Arts Inc. But basically it's existed to this day with the same mission, which is to research, document, discover, and share ancient jewelry making knowledge. Now, why do we care about ancient jewelry making knowledge? Because it's all about handmade. That's what it's all about. Those are all handmade skills. And just as a world and a people and as metalsmiths, we're all poorer the more that that stuff is lost and forgotten. So we'll just hop back into Alexis's bench just for a moment to show you. Oh, <laughs> she's carefully and lovingly put it in the kiln. And then we're about to fuse. So every step of the way, things can go wrong, but they're not going to, because Alexis and I are gonna do this together and she's a badass. So how did I come to be at the only school in the world that specializes in ancient jewelry making techniques? Uh, thereby proving the fact that it is way better to be lucky than smart.
but um, basically back when I was 21, like many people, I didn't know what the hell I wanted to do with my life. Uh, I was taking, you know, a few like college classes in art history and partying a lot and, you know, just like, I don't know, I don't know what I want to do. Like I had always been sort of more academically minded, but I sort of just felt in my gut, like this is not what I want to do for a living. So yeah, like I was like a cocktail waitress and like live in La Vida Loca. Great. So, um, I hope this doesn't sound too um, metaphysical, but literally one night I had a dream and it was like someone whispered in my ear and said, go be a jeweler. That's what you need to do. I don't remember what happened in the rest of the dream. I don't, you know what I mean? But, but I woke up in the morning and just went, oh, well, I've never received a pronouncement before, so I better go do it. So with the um, hubris and enthusiasm of a young person, uh, of course, this is gonna super date me, but back then there was no interweb, so I had to like go to the library and look for jewelry schools. Now, I grew up in New Jersey, so you know, there was nothing there. Uh, and I rode away to, oh, I don't know, four or five schools in New York. And at the time, Jewelry Arts Institute, now Jewelry Arts Inc., was the only one that wrote back to me. Um, and just so you know what a rube I was, uh, at the time we were over like a third floor, uh, third floor, like cold water walk up, you know, on the West side. And I called up and I was like, hi, um, could you connect me to the financial aid department? Um, and the goldsmith that answered the phone said like, what do you think this is? Princeton? Uh, and I was humiliated and kind of was like, oh, never mind. Um, of course, now you all know what a, you know, I thought like Institute, right? White coats, the whole thing. But at any rate, even though I was humiliated, I showed up anyway. And I knew right from the first class that these were my people. This was my thing. And not because like I was any good at it or I knew what the hell was happening or anything like that. It just, it was just right. Um, and I have never left here. That was 30 years ago. We've moved locations. My job has changed um, multiple times because I, basically I was a student for two years, then a teacher for two years. Uh, no, after two years, I became a teacher. Then I taught for many, many years. And uh, when the former owner, uh, Bessie Jameson, who had been Bob Kulik's apprentice, uh, was getting ready to retire, I just felt like, no. Like, I mean, not no, she couldn't retire, but like, this is too important. This is too important to me. And I feel like what we do is important in the world. I mean, don't get me wrong. I know we're not saving lives, but it, it means a lot to me. So I did what I had to do and now I'm the owner. So this has just always been my happy place. And that's what I mean about better to be lucky than smart because I was like too dumb as a kid to question my dream and I just did it. And, and it was just right for me. So I'm a really lucky person that I ended up at somehow the amazingly right place for me. Um, but also the more time I spent here, like, I mean, I knew it right away, but it just kept getting reinforced. The people here made the most amazing handmade jewelry, like museum worthy stuff. The people who went on to have careers became very well known for their work. You know, when Charles Brush wanted to learn to granulate, he came and studied here with Bob Kulik. I mean, there's too many New York and worldwide jewelers to name that went through here and, you know, really built their whole skill set here. And there was lots of other people, too, that just weren't interested in being out in the world. You know, they weren't interested in really having a business. They just made jewelry for themselves or their friends. And it was just about the creative expression. And and I love that atmosphere. Like we all love to argue a lot about what the best way is to do anything. So, you know, we all like, no, it's not, I'll show you, you know, and it's very stimulating. And for me, it just like, I've never been bored here. I've never been like, oh, what am I doing? It's always interesting. Uh, easy, like definitely fucking not, but it's always kept me really engaged and happy. So I'm just an incredibly lucky person. I won the lottery. Uh, I wish I won the lottery with money, but instead I won it with job satisfaction. And I really just wanna show maybe a little peek behind the curtain about the handmade jewelry world that I know. Uh, materials, supplies, the community, uh, the inspiration, just maybe things that you never knew went into making those beautiful handmade pieces of jewelry. Handmade is my entire life. I literally eat, sleep, breathe, torch, <laughs> you know, this is what it's about for me. So hopefully I can show you something you've never seen before.